Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's overview and lesson on using Logic 10.4's new multi-effects plugins. In this series, you'll learn what these plugins are about and I'll give you some ideas as to how you can effectively use them in your own music, whatever style you produce. So, what are they? Originally part of the Camel Fat Company and now given a refresh by Apple in their latest update, they're called multi-effects because they essentially group together conveniently all the effects you're likely to need when you want to enhance or transform a musical part. The fat effects, which we'll be looking at in this lesson, provides colouring opportunities for all manner of instruments, but are probably most suited for adding warmth and presence, distortion, punch and fatness to drums, basses, synths and guitars. But that's not to say you should limit yourself to just those instruments or even just using the plugin for enhancing warmth and depth. The step effects enables modulation control and step sequencing that can add rhythmical and modulated enhancements to your music. There's three 128 step modulators, yes you heard that right, that allow huge amounts of control. It's primarily aimed at electronic styles of music, but I think its application could be used on all sorts of different sources from sound design, enhancing Logic's older synth set, and even adding interest to vocals or instruments for effect. These plugins essentially provide you with a huge creative palette of colors. Let's dive in and look at the FAT effects. Logic's FAT effects is split into four different areas, modules, an X and Y pad that can be modulated in real time or with automation, a modulation section that modulates the modules, and an effect section where you can decide the order in which the modules are placed, much like a guitarist will chain pedals on a guitar pedal board. Modules can be switched on and off by clicking the on and off button, and each module has a series of dials and drop-down menus. The drop-down menus allow you to select different filter characteristics, filter types, distortion types, modulation effects types, and different compression types, which gives enormous tone shaping options for each module. And I highly recommend you go through and see how they influence the sound. The dials simply allow you to control how much the module will shape, modulate, or saturate a musical part. There's way too many possibilities and musical options from subtle frequency enhancement to all-out gnarly distortion and modulation madness to show you in just one video. So I'll demonstrate one idea that might spark some creative thinking on your part for modulating your own sources. So where this comes into its own is being able to modulate any of the modules and parameters within the plugin. So I'm going to focus on that in this video. Let's take the bandpass module, for example, and create a pumping effect on a whole track. I think the bandpass module could be easily overlooked or used just to low or high cut sound. So I'm going to focus on how powerful this module alone can be. So traditionally, the way you'd pump a mix is to set up a compressor, sidechain it to a kick, and away you go. But here's another way of doing it, with some added scope for more creative options. Each modulation source can be routed to any module, but what's great is the target drop-down menu only highlights the modules that are switched on. This is useful because you can quickly and easily find the active modules that you want to treat. So in this case, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to modulate the bandpass high cutoff and the reject mix dial with LFO1 and LFO2. I'm doing this to show you how modulating just two target sources can have a huge impact on the music. I'm going to do this to create the pumping effect, but also to add a high cutoff filter sweep, which will create movement in the mix and demonstrate how just one module with a couple of LFOs modulating the target source can hugely change the sound. So let's set this up. In the bandpass module, I'll reduce the high to around 140 hertz and dial in some high resonance with the high res dial, which will eventually enhance the filter sweep. I'll set this to taste. 
Next, I'll set the reject dial, which essentially allows you to blend all of the rejected and filtered out audio with the process signal. It's really just a mix dial. I'll set the reject mix to around 60%. So now I want to modulate this. So I activate LFO1, set the target to band pass high cutoff, set the depth to full to ensure the full filter will sweep up, and then apply a rate of two bars so the sweep evolves over time. This is all to taste, of course, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so nothing special. Let's now add the pump. LFO2 target is bandpass mix reject, depth around plus 50% and the rate is on every beat. In the bandpass module area, the reject mix style is set to around 60%, but this may change. Logic have added a great visual modulation aid and it really helps you to see the routing and rate of modulation. The blue outer ring around the reject mix style gives me instant visual feedback and allows me to see exactly how LFO2 will modulate the mix. Now you may have noticed with LFO1 connected to the high pass slider, no visual aid is given. Also, if you use the envelope, the visual aid only starts working once you hit play and the blue outer ring also gives visual feedback for the X and Y pad as well, which is great. So let's hear how all this sounds. As you can hear, the music now sounds very different. But let's not stop there. Why not add in the X and Y pad? So I'll bring down the reject mix dial to around zero, switch on the X pad and set the target to bandpass reject with a depth of plus 100. Now in real time, I can control the amount of reject signal that's being modulated by LFO2. And it sounds like this. <laughs> So if we can do that with the reject dial, why not control the filter sweep with the Y pad? Same as before, set the target source up and dial in to taste. I'll set this around plus 60% and away you go. That sounds pretty cool. Let's add in one last element to the X and Y pad. I'm going to switch on the mod effects module and set the mix dial to zero, the rate to zero hertz as well, and the type I've selected is doubler. The X, Y pad gives you the option to target two modulation sources, which is a neat little feature. So I'm going to target the mod effects mix, which will allow me to control live the amount of chorusing effect being added to the music as I move the X and Y pad around. Let's check it out. Finally, the last element I could add, if I wanted to, could be compression. And I could then make use of the signal chain and decide exactly where in the chain I want the compressor to be placed, before the bandpass module or the mod effects module, or even before the band reject, or compress everything at the end 
before the master output where I can then decide if I want to apply parallel processing to the whole mix with the mix dial. It's just an endless number of choices that you can make. So as you can see from just modulating three different sources, the scope to change and alter sound is endless. And that's without adding or modulating the filter, bass enhancement, distortion or compression modules. The possibilities really are down to your own imagination and what you want to do. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and have fun messing around with this amazing plugin. Logic Pro X 10.4 has added some truly powerful tools and the multi effects plugins, the fat effects, is no exception. If you're interested in learning more about my tutorial site, head over to masteringinlogic.com where you can learn all about the art of mastering music with more new courses coming soon. Thanks for watching and happy mixing and mastering.